Hi guys, Asmo here and today I'm making a short guide, basically everything you need to know to get started with Self Curse Fire BV Occultist. This is basically going to be a video that's going over uh, about the build, how does the build work, what's the purpose of the build, what are the uh, positives and the negatives of the build, how to get started with it on the tightest budget I guess I would consider before starting with this build, how to go about upgrades and making this build more powerful until you can basically tackle any content in the game with the uh, 100% delirious maps being the main content that you're going to be running and then also in the end I'm going to talk about a few ways you can actually break the build and how to avoid those situations because there are certain things you can do to the build that would seem like a good idea but will actually break your build. So uh, for all the guys that wanted to play this build as well and follow in the footsteps of what I'm doing and farm the most juicy content that's basically what the, this video is for. So about the build Basically, if you don't know, self curse, um, self curse build basically relies on shackles of the wretched being used to reflect the temp chains curse to yourself. So, if you read the temp chains curse, you can see uh, that it uh, makes other effects on cursed enemies expire forty percent slower. That has to uh, that affects uh, things like your flasks. That affects things like your buffs, such as Immortal Call or Val Grace. That affects the duration of your uh, Blade Vortex blades. It affects uh, everything basically that has some kind of a duration. Inspiration charges affects everything. So. What you're doing with this build, you're putting temp chains here. You increasing you are increasing the curse effectiveness until basically the cap of the possible uh, effectiveness of that to extend the duration of all of the buffs on you, including the headhunter buffs, most importantly, so that you can stack many of them at the same time. Um, that's basically the, the gist of the build. And you were using Fire BV because that's like the easiest way to take advantage of uh, the, all the damage and all the buffs that we're getting from the Headhunter, as well as scaling the explodes from the chest, which are completely broken. Um, so the positives of this build are that it scales with the content which means the harder content you run, basically the more juicy the maps, the more monsters, the more rare monsters, especially in them, the stronger you actually become, which means you can run absolutely crazy content with insane amount of monsters and they can be really, really tanky even. As long as you can kill the first few packs, you're going to roll over everything else. And it's amazing for that type of a content. It's amazing for content such as uh, emblems, right? You can run the Legion emblems, five-way emblems, as soon as you basically assemble this build you can do five ways and you can just destroy them even on like two or three player HP uh, because you're gonna scale uh, so well with the buffs that you keep getting uh, from the rare monsters in this uh, in this these fights right um, and basically the negatives of the build are that it cannot really do bosses you cannot fight bosses or you cannot do content uh, without your headhunter stacks if you lose your headhunter stacks uh, if you are for example doing simulacrum and it's like wave 20 but on wave 19 you took time to like put your loot into the stash because you had a full inventory and then wave 20 starts and Kossis appears forget about fighting that just exit this simulacrum because you're not going to be able to do it because the build really needs to ramp up and needs to kill few packs first in order to gain the buffs and become stronger and stronger so those are the positives and the negatives this is just purely a juiced map uh, character like you make this character because you can kill your character like you can kill bosses on some other character that you've had let's say you start with a miner or with like a toxic rain character or or a, a summoner whatever something that can like kill bosses but it's not so fast in like 100% delirium maps you make some currency you get a headhunter and then on top of a headhunter I would recommend like 30x and then you can roll this build. I do not recommend playing this build and starting with any, anything less than Headhunter and 30X. If you're looking for some budget version, I know a lot of people are gonna be asking in the comments like, can I start with this budget? Can I start with that budget? What's the budget version? Can I just do this? I'm gonna say the bottom line is, if you don't have Headhunter and 30X, do not play this build. Just play something else until you make the currency for Headhunter and then 30X on top of that and then you can roll uh, this build. You can play it as, you can play something else as an occultist, you can play whatever you want, but you, you're, you're not gonna find a guide for this build 
with like super budget with no currency, right? This is not something that's gonna happen. This is a build you create after you already have an established economy. If you have some decent currency already and you can afford the Headhunter and the 30X on top of that, you're going to be able to comfortably play it and improve it over time. So what do you need as the bare minimum for that 30X? I would say you need, uh, first of all, obviously other than the Headhunter, you need Shackles of the Wretched, at first, it doesn't need to have the curse on hit. This is an upgrade that you're gonna make afterwards, but just to function, you just need the shackles. Um, you need all the gems that we have, but you don't need necessarily everything awakened, right? So you don't need the awakened gems yet. You just need all the gems that we have. And I'm gonna post my POB in the description. So you're gonna be able to see the list of all the gems that we have. Um, you're going to need um, Solstice Vigil with Magmatic Strikes allocated on it. Magmatic Strikes uh, give, gives us the conversion. So it gives us here 20% uh, Fizz converted to fire and also 5% of Fizz as extra fire. So this gives us a little bit of damage and converts all of the damage. Uh, you're going to also need Calm's Roots, just base Calm's Roots, it's a 1C item, very very easy to get. You're going to need the Signal Fire, uh, preferably get something that has a good amount of physical damage converted to um, extra fire. You can see here the maximum is uh, 35, like gain 35 of fizz as extra fire that's what you want on this and you can get this from prophecy because it costs like 50 chaos 40 chaos but if you get the prophecy and the base one you can get it much cheaper i got it for like 5c uh, very very cheap and then you're gonna need other than solstice vigil and that and uh, this you're gonna need a decent bow i definitely recommend getting like a like a crafted bow this will cost you something about like eight, eight nine x something like that that's gonna be the most expensive item other than the headhunter in the beginning you want a bow that has been crafted with the essence uh, for the spell damage you can make it yourself if you know how as well you just basically spam essence like you just put essence with the spell damage then you force the plus one uh, to socket the gems then you multi-craft the rest and then you uh, whatever have the like the last suffix you can like remove add and, and get crit on that until you get crit multi the increased crit strike chance that i have right now doesn't do anything for it it's just for the local damage on the bow you need global critical strike multiplier on that if you want to improve this um and that's basically it this the the bow is the sixth thing that you're gonna uh, have your main skill in you want to start with level 21 blade vortex if you get val blade vortex 21 that's also good and uh ideally empower level four but you can start with empower level three and then get it rolling later um then another necessity is like 30% temp chains curse effect helmet doesn't really matter what base that is if you can get some es and life and res on it that's that's what matters so get some rare helmet with like a decent base with decent es and then put some life and res on it 30% increased temp chains curse effect that's what you need on this and then for flasks you can get these fairly cheap except for the cinder swallow so at series promise uh, crit flask with bleed removal or ignite removal if you get corrupted blood immunity on a jewel uh, you can get replica roomies i definitely recommend that it's very very good in terms of the defenses you get um 50 percent block and 30 percent spell block on this which is insane and the duration instead of being 1.2 seconds it's more like three or four seconds with the temp chains on you so you actually get a lot of duration and then the petrified during flask effect doesn't affect you because you have calm's roots so you literally have no negatives it's just like an insane roomies roomies uh, for this build and then a wise oak and make sure that you balance your resists so that the highest resist is going to be the fire one right it can have some other resist equal to it but fire has to be uh, the highest one in order to get the penetration for that and that will also help you cap your res because you can have this flask up all the time because again you're mapping not bossing you don't care about bosses on this build at all um, and other than that explode the chest that's what you want you definitely need an explode the chest it doesn't matter what else it has on it it doesn't need to be six link you're just gonna need like a four link and a two link on this uh that's what you want you want explode the chest um and that's all basically when it comes to the gear and then for the jewels you want to make sure that you get um too large with either elemental damage or fire damage and then you can get things like widespread destruction sadist prismatic heart you can also get corrosive elements corrosive elements will help uh, 
if you're a herald of ash will apply exposure so that helps a little bit with the explosions um and that's basically it like whatever cheap uh, cluster jewel like that you can get like with like widespread destruction prismatic heart this will be perfectly fine and then uh you also are going to need watcher's eye with which is going to be like the most important jewel with um physical damage converted to fire while affected by anger uh, this jewel right now goes for i don't know it's not very expensive the conversion one just the conversion 30 chaos 50 chaos very very cheap um, so that's another thing that you need um, then in terms of other jewels the medium the mediums i'm gonna explain in a second i rolled them myself and i rolled the big ones myself as well but the thing that you need to buy is inspired learning inspired learnings right now are for two eggs pretty cheap uh, they used to be for three eggs now they're two eggs so inspired learnings are going to be placed in these exact locations so you can basically copy that from the pob and it will make sure that inspired learnings are working and stealing an additional buff each from the rare monsters that you're killing adding on top of your headhunter stacks making you even stronger and ramping your buffs even harder in terms of the medium jewels you're going to need uh, jewels that are that have curse effect and I actually recommend getting five or six passives I have four passives that are f perfectly fine for me right now because I have extra curse effect because my awakened hex that didn't hit level five yet so I have to have a whispers of doom for the third curse but once I unspec this I'm gonna switch to cluster jewels uh, med mediums that have extra uh, nodes but I recommend like in the beginning getting if you get like these five passive ones then you have an option of grabbing this extra curse effect or or not grabbing it right and going for the jewel slot because jewel slot is very very valuable and in the beginning uh you need to make sure that you roll um you roll dark discourse on every single one of them so you want four times dark discourse and then you want to roll one of them with wish for death which is going to give you calling strike one of them with evil eye which is going to give you uh, blind as well as five percent more damage on the cursed enemies and then another one with master of fear which is going to give you a nerve um, the last one you want with the one with the node that gives you I forget what it's called but it's five percent curse effect and 20 percent increased damage if you cursed an enemy recently that's the best one to get and those will be your medium jewels um, and in the in these ones i have conqueror's potency because i need more effect of curses uh with like damage with like uh, fire penetration but the ideal ones that you want to get are like global crit uh, like, like global crit multiplier spell crit multiplier and global physical damage and then whatever else uh, mod you can get on that uh, i think it has to be a prefix so i guess like extra life or something like that right like increased life that would be the ideal one uh percent like seven percent increased life maximum life something like that you can also get like res um that cannot be hindered you actually don't need because you are not getting hindered through um through there was like the evil eye there was something that hindered you i think that dark discourse right but you actually don't hinder yourself with it and that's basically it those are the requirements for the build all of the things that i just mentioned are gonna be like under 30x for all of it total and then after that what are the upgrades the upgrades are um actually like i made the upgrade of going for the frenzy charges on head uh, on the chest but i think actually a better way to do this instead of going for frenzy charges or on hit go for something else go for like extra crit or aoe or whatever else but get uh, militant faith so militant faith in this uh, slot with uh, pain atonement picked will give you three percent more damage per power charge and you're gonna have a lot of power charges in the end and that's gonna be even better than the frenzy charges like i checked in pob militant faith setup is actually better than getting the frenzy charges because you lose frenzy charges with militant faith you actually cannot gain frenzy charges uh, you could still have i guess minimum frenzy charges uh on jewelry or something like that but that's it um and then you want to get transcendent flesh that's another uh, upgrade that is uh, very very much recommended it gives you like something like 50 something crit multi like an insane number uh, so this is a very very good jewel to get um and other than that you can get like uh, multi-stat uh, watcher's eye for example you can get watcher's eye that's gonna have uh, multiple mods for example like uh, fire penetration or fist damage added as extra, extra fire while affected by anger those are the good ones to get you can get a better bow with like an implicit plus one and like double damage something like that you need to get pretty much as soon as you can 
um, Curse on Head on a ring with flammability, as well as Curse on Head elemental weakness on the gloves. These gloves with elemental weakness are how many X? 20, 30, 20 to 30 X. So that's a pretty chunky upgrade, but it's definitely worth it because it just multiplies your damage. You do way, way, way more damage. So that's another upgrade to make. Um, next upgrades to make are of course getting like Cinder Swallow Urn with a crit chance. Um, next upgrade is to get Circle of Anguish and I actually need the reduced mana reservation on Herald of Ash because you can see I have like very very little mana but I am using this mana to also run Herald of Purity which is adding more damage like 13% more physical damage it adds actually more than the small amount of Herald of Ash effectiveness would add from the extra mod on the ring and it's significantly cheaper uh, so that works much much better. Another upgrade is the helmet. For helmet, you want like extra power charge and nearby enemies have a negative, like minus nine to fire res. See you next time. Even elevated if you want. You can also have AOE. You can have uh, like fire or lightning or cold damage to spells as well. A crit multi, you can have a lot of things on the helmet. So that's another big, big, big upgrade. Um, other than that, you can also have Quiver with uh, Corruption that will give you extra like up to I think 11 or 12% face damage of extra fire or extra lightning. Uh, this will add a lot of damage. And then you can also have Calm's Roots with either the Enchant that I have, 10% increased movement speed while you haven't been hit recently, or Corrupted for 10% increased movement speed. Uh, both work uh, just as well. And that's basically it when it comes to the upgrades, like for uh, the clusters, of course, you can like min max that a lot. You can have like sadist here. Um, you can have like really good amounts of like stats and res and uh, of course, like harvest craft your helmet and your chest to give you some extra res as well. So that you're res capped without having to worry about the wise oak. Um, what else is here? You can also have like uh, inspired learning that are corrupted. There's like so much that you can do to min-max this build, but it's not really necessary. Like if you take the build that I have currently and copy it exactly as it is, it can do 100% delirious maps because that's what I've been doing. I've been farming. Um, I've been farming right now actually cemetery. I switched from farming canyon because it was crashing on the big harby pack and i can't be bothered dealing with that i switched to cemetery dropping some uh, brothers stash cards and exalts it's going very very well and farming this uh, fractured 100 percent delirium map with this build is very very easy right now even though i'm getting like one fps but it's still worth doing and this build handles it pretty well uh, in terms of the things you can do to break the build i think this is like the most interesting section i guess of this guide um, there are so many things you can actually do to wreck yourself uh, number one thing is map mods so obviously you know that you don't want to run elemental reflect right because you're dealing 100 percent elemental damage so fizz reflect is fine but elemental reflect will wreck you uh, also no regen is annoying you'd have to run like a mana flask and that sucks so i i don't run uh, no region maps as well and then also um yeah so that reflects that and then there's another thing that you don't want to run which is for example temp chains right if you have a map with temp chains um if you're not doing fractured maps it's not that big of a deal because you just reroll it but with fractured maps it becomes mirrored so you can't reroll it and temp chains on a map like enemies like like uh, players that are affected by temp chains with like increased effect or whatever is actually so bad because it stops your temp chains effect, right? Your temp chains is gonna have massive effect. I actually should explain where you get all of that effect from in a second, but the temp chains that you get from the map overrides your own temp chains. So you're gonna have much weaker temp chains, which means your headhunter buffs are gonna be uh, way, way shorter, right? So avoid temp chain mods on maps if you can. Uh, and then the last mod that you want to avoid on maps is enemies have, I think it's that goes up to 70% chance to avoid elemental ailments. And why is that bad? Because if you have a decent um, awakening bonus objectives, this says here 25% increased effect of modifiers on non-unique maps. And essentially, if you enter that map, it's going to have 100% chance to avoid elemental ailments and if you cannot shock as you can see i have here some added lightning damage right if you cannot shock your enemies because of the herald of thunder then that means your herald of thunder 
is not going to trigger, right? The storm is not going to trigger. If the storm doesn't trigger, then it means it doesn't curse with temp chains through the hex touch. If it doesn't curse with temp chains, that means you're not reflecting it to yourself. That means your build doesn't work at all. So you can brick yourself by running uh, enemies avoid elemental ailments. So make sure you're not running that. When you're fracturing your maps, that's one of the reasons why you're running corroded fossils, not only for no reflect, but also for no elemental ailment avoidance. Mm, so how do we get all of this curse effect? This is, I think, very, very important. And I, I almost forgot to talk about that. Um, we need, to, in order to cap your temp chains, right? The amount of the curse effectiveness you want, you're going to be able to see it here. You, you pick the temp chains that you have in your gloves. It's important to pick this specific one because you also are going to be running the, the aura one. So on this one that you're reflecting to yourself, you look at the misc tab and it shows curse effect modifier. 177 uh, means I am capped currently because it goes up to 175. With 175 and with solstice vigil, you are getting the maximum possible duration of your buffs that you can be getting. So you're aiming for 175. The way you get it is from the places that I've already shown you, right? Like getting dark discourse, stacking it everywhere, getting curse effectiveness wherever you can. Here we got like effect of curses, occultist gets extra 15%. Uh, also you can get stuff here, going to the whispers of doom. So stacking all of those things together, including like uh, conqueror's potency, if you really want, uh, stacking all of those things together with the stuff that you have on your gear. So for example, you have 30% increased temp chains curse effect in uh, your helmet enchant. Then you have the quality from the gem. So the gem level 21 is cool, but 23% quality is the most important part because that will give you that extra percent. It, it's hit here, it gives you 11% increased effect of the curse for the quality. And then you further increase that quality by running enhance. So enhance will give you extra 24% quality to that, right? It gives you extra quality to active skill gems, which temp chains counts as, and you, as you can see, 24% quality from the support, right? So this is like 47% quality. And it, as you can see, shows 23% uh, increase effect of the curse. And then even more than that, we are also gaining curse effect from the um, hex touch support. So as you can see, the hex touch support has also a quality modifier increased effect of supported curses. So this gives you 10% more increased effect. And all of that being stacked uh, stacked uh, together on top is supposed to give you at least 175 and then you are at maximum number. So back to what I was, this is very, very important, right? But back to what I was talking about, other ways to break your build. Another way you can break your build is to actually put um, elemental focus in your gems. People will be going into POB and looking at the different gems. I'm like, okay, what am, what am I supposed to run here? A lot of people run increased AOE, like awakened increased AOE. Um, however, if you are lacking damage, you can run, uh, for example, control distraction like I do. This will give you a lot more spell damage and with headhunter buffs, you're gonna get that crit chance back, no problem. You're still gonna get like 100% crit chance. Um, so this instead of awakened AOE is what I'm using, but you might be like five head and like, okay, I'm gonna put elemental focus. That's gonna be more damage than uh, combustion or inspiration or something. And if you do that, also you're not gonna be able to shock. And then you're not gonna be able to trigger your Held of Thunder and you're not gonna be able to uh, apply temp chains to enemies and therefore to yourself. So that's another way that you can break your build. Other way that you can break your build accidentally is to have a flask with curse removal. People do that sometimes, they look at the map and it has like vulnerability, elemental weakness, like fuck that, I'm just gonna wear a flask with uh, curse removal. If you remove the curses from yourself, you're gonna get wrecked because you're actually not gonna be gaining as many buffs, right? You're not gonna be retaining them and you're gonna be removing the temp chains from yourself. Therefore, your build is also not going to work. Um, so that's basically the gist of it. Hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any other questions other than, than uh, about more budget version of this build, please don't ask about a more budget version of this build. This is already like as cheap as you can get with this build. If you don't have the currency, then I have plenty of other builds and videos for what to do to make enough currency for your headhunter. But this is 
not a budget build not a beginner build really um, but hopefully i answered uh, all of the questions that you had and uh, pob is going to be in the description you can also check out this build in action on the stream on twitch tv uh, slash asmodeus stream thank you guys for watching and see you next time